What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another Tar Heel Illustrated podcast brought to you by TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. Joining me as he always does, it's our director of basketball recruiting, David Sisk. And, and David, we're here, obviously, to talk about the news that, that broke on Tuesday afternoon surrounding UNC 2023 signee Simeon Wilcher. I'm sure for those who clicked on the video, they know what would have happened. But just to recap it, he did ask for a release from his national letter of intent from North Carolina, like I said earlier on Tuesday afternoon. So a lot of chatter on Twitter about it, what it means for the team, what it means moving forward, why he rec- why he decided to, to request that. And obviously a lot of Carolina fans want to know more about it. So we're going to dive into that right here and right now. So uh, David, I guess first, Talk to me about, I know you got to talk to Simeon's dad earlier today. You have a piece up on our website. I'll try to link it below as well, if I can remember. Um, but tell us a little bit more about that decision and, and how it played out behind the scenes. Well, when I got the news uh, this afternoon that he was uh, asking out of the uh, letter of intent and uh, was going to look elsewhere, I was surprised but I wasn't surprised and and I'll kind of go into what I mean by that. But uh, the reason that I was surprised was when uh, Elliot Cadeau reclassed and came aboard at North Carolina, uh, Andrew, uh, and I've I've discussed this with Andrew and I think Andrew's talked to you. uh, I've been hearing a lot of things for a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. and I believe I said on last week's podcast about Elliot Cano that I had probably done more research, talked to more sources about him than I've done with any other uh, recruit, prospect, player, what have you, since I've been at Rivals. And what it was, you you had uh, already had guards in the fold. So when Cano came in, you had more of a crowded backcourt, and especially – guards who are or consider themselves to be on ball guards, which we might call point guard, but it's going to be somebody that's going to handle the ball. So uh, obviously Elliot Cadeau uh, would be considered that. RJ Davis might be considered that. Simeon Wilcher uh, is in the same boat. Mm. So you kind of, and you could put Seth Trimble in there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Or guys that could play on ball guard. Mm. So <clears throat> when Elliot uh, committed or, or reclassed, I think it was last Thursday. Mm-hmm. One of the first things I did was call his dad, Sergio. And at that time, Sergio, I asked him what he thought. And I, I really, when I called him, I wasn't sure. And I thought I might get some, well, this is another on ball guard. He's coming in. He was originally 24, makes it awful crowded. We're not sure about this, but. He was very positive initially. Looking forward to playing with them. And they didn't know both from New Jersey. They'd known uh, um, Simeon, Sergio, had known Elliot for a long time. They were good with it. And then uh, today, I was I was out of pocket when the news broke today. So mm. I, when I when I uh, am able to find out and see that it's happened, I'm like, whoa! It did catch me off guard. And the thing that did catch me off guard more than anything was, you know, like we said last Thursday, they were good. But I called uh, Sergio. Uh, He called me back. We've always had a great relationship till do. And what the crux of it came down to, if you're a guard in the 6'4", 6'5", range and you want to play the NBA, you've got to prove that you're an all-ball guard. You know, being off the ball, playing a two, playing a wing – NBA wings are six eight six nine, mm-hmm. so he needed to be in a situation where he could do that. So if you look at what they got, you know R.J. Davis is on and off. Elliot Cadeau is a tremendous point guard. Uh, it's coming in at that spot, so, but that's what he does. They really don't have the size necessarily to move him off the ball. So their take was, hey. Three guys can't be on the ball. If somebody gets pushed off, it's probably going to be Simeon. So, you know, that was a decision they made. He was clear, loved North Carolina, loved Hubert Davis. But it, it, in, in, uh, in the end, it was a crowded position. It was a business decision because, you know, he wants to go somewhere 
where he could be on ball. And he like says, look, I understand. I may, they may be off the ball some. He may be playing the two, but he's going to have, uh, they feel like a, more of an opportunity somewhere else to come back on the ball and play the point guard spot. And they just didn't feel like with the way the roster is, is shook out, especially since three class of Elliott Cadeau, like that was as much a possibility in North Carolina. So that's what the whole thing is based on. Yeah, and I mean, it make, completely makes sense, really, when you think about it, because like you, I know you and AJ have talked a lot about it. And we've talked about it on some podcasts over the last, even going back, you know, a month, month and a half or so talking about, I think a lot of people have kind of viewed the Elliot Cadeau situation. I like to call it kind of black and white. Like, Oh, you, you got this really good point guard right here. We need to bring him in no matter what it takes. And while I do think it is a positive for any program to get a guy like Elliot Cadeau, I think the thing that, that you have to understand, especially Carolina fans, it, it, it is, it was always going to shake the tree yeah. it, it, because there's just, there's so many guys in that room now. I mean, you, you just talked about it. RJ Davis, Seth Trimble, Elliot Cadeau, Paxson Wojcik, Cormac Ryan. You've got a list of guys in there that need to play. And when you're bringing in a guy like Elliot Cadeau, he's reclassifying with an understanding that he is going to play a lot and likely start for the Tar Heels. So when you look at that group, especially once you learn that, you know, Wilch is a guy that wants to play on the ball. That's what he wants to do. It's what we've heard directly from him, essentially. It, it seems like when you look at what Carolina currently has and, and you look at it realistically, he, how much was he really going to play next season with the arrival of Cadeau? I think it would have been extremely limited, especially with RJ pl pro likely playing and filling in at that backup point guard spot when he's not playing the two and not to mention Seth Trimble, who's kind of like a forgotten man at this point that not a lot of people are talking about who I think has the potential to be a really good player at North Carolina as well. So based on what you're telling me, David, it seems like the Cadeau situation is kind of the final straw forcing him out. It seems like if Cadeau's not here or maybe doesn't reclassify, it's more likely that Wilcher's on the roster. I mean, I'm pretty safely can, can say that, right? Yeah, you're right. And I don't want people to, it would be easy maybe for people to look at this and say, well, this is all on Elliot Cadeau. He's the bad guy here. He's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it just so happens that like you say, you've got a lot of guys get at that spot and, uh, as we opened up the show, I, I, I told you it's something that we've talked about a lot. So we had heard uh, as early as, gosh, April, early April, that a Cadeau reclass, even though he was ready, he is ready, uh, plenty capable of, of coming in and being an outstanding board guard in North Carolina, but that wasn't a done deal, a reclass to North Carolina because of that log jam a little bit and because R.J. Davis, uh, I think, was under the impression that he was going to be the starting point guard. Yeah. So, um, in fact, I know that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you had – we were hearing uh, he may stay in 24, which wasn't as likely, but there was a chance – that he could reclass, that reclass and then decommit and go somewhere else. You know, that talk, with, I'm not saying that we thought that's what was going to happen, but that talk, trust me, in grassroots circles, I discussed this last week with Andrew on here, there was a lot of that out there, and it was something that had to be addressed. Well, obviously, he's in the fold at North Carolina. Two things that we thought would happen. Well, number one, what will happen to R.J. Davis? Would R.J. Davis perhaps look at, okay, a point guard comes in, I may be off the ball, I'm not happy with that. Uh, would I do something else? And then, obviously, you've got Simeon here. And like we said, it's just like there were too many cooks in the kitchen mm -hmm. at that spot is the way I put it. So it turned out uh, two's company, three's a crowd when it comes to ball handling, and that's not even talking about Seth Trimble. Yeah, so, that. you know, that was basically the consensus of it. So, yes, I think wherever you see uh, Simeon Wilcher turn up at the next school, he's going to do so in a role where he's going to be a ball handler and he's going to be an on-ball guard, might play off some, but he's going to be an on-ball guard quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And he's, I think you mentioned it in your piece, but kind of the highest rated guy of the 2023 class that's still out there and obviously not committed technically to a university now. So he'll definitely be very, very highly sought after. And I'm, I'm sure he'll land up at a, at a big time program. David, last thing I want to talk about, and I, 
I don't know how much insight you can offer on, and this is more speculation than anything, but what do you, what do you think is potentially next for, for UNC? Do you think they just kind of roll with what they have? Do they dip in the portal? I mean, is there anybody in the 2023 class that in, could entice that's uncommitted that can entice Carolina? What do you think maybe happens with his, I guess, open spot for lack of a better word? I don't know that it changes anything because, you know, I've said all along, when North Carolina went in early transfer portal, I felt like the best they could bring in a center uh, to play mm-hmm. behind Armando Bancott, that they were done in the portal. And mm-hmm. it's very difficult to do to go get a quality player who's good enough to play at North Carolina and say, hey, you're going to be on the bench. You know, it, it's, it wouldn't be hard to get a player to come to North Carolina, but when you're telling them up front, hey, the playing time is going to be very limited, if any at all then that's more difficult. So I felt like pretty well like they were going to stand pat. I don't think the Simeon Wiltshire decommit it, it really changes anything because you would have a guard coming into the same situation. As we've already said, yeah. depth in the backcourt's not a problem. It's still not a problem. You say, well, they had to play early. It's still a full backcourt. There's plenty of players there. So I, I don't think uh, – they do that. I think they, they roll uh, pretty much with what they've got uh, in the uh, on this 23-24 roster at the current time. And I, I feel like this is pretty well what it's going to be when they go into the season in November. Yeah, a lot of cooks in those kitchen, David. And uh, again, it's not really a surprise when you think about it that I, I tweeted it out, but it, I, I kind of said it when Cadeau reclassified, I just always felt like somebody was going to leave at that guard position. You know, it, it, no, no, nobody really knew who it might be. I think a lot of people thought it could be Trimble, um, you know, could be uh, uh, who ended up being Wiltshire, could be somebody else that maybe a transfer that had come in, but ultimately ends up being Wiltshire. And, and like you said, still plenty of depth in that room. So I don't think there's any need at all for Carolina fans to panic or throw blame around on Hubert. I think it's just when you got a really talented guy reclassing that you bring in, you got a lot of people there already. Somebody in today's, you know, landscape of college sports and transfer portal and being able to get out and go find a school pretty quickly. It was always going to happen. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. And David, unless you want to add anything else. Yeah. I'll say this. I think uh, that we had a uh, subscriber uh, at Tar Heel Illustrated in uh, the uh, Four Corners forum that put it best, kind of stuck out to me. And, and he was uh, – that we had addressed what we, we've spoken about here mm-hmm. and said the bottom line is, you know, when Elliot Cano came in, you know, there are probably some feathers that are going to be, are going to be ruffled. And uh, n- that has no bearing on Simeon. You know, we're talking about I'm, – like I said, we've heard several names, but – but he said, you know, after last year, of course, Simeon had nothing to do with last year, but kind of talking about just last year's roster altogether from the way the team played, he said, you know, after last year's play, some, some feathers needed to be ruffled. Yeah. So, like we said, it's it's a total uh, – you're talking about a lot of players got out in the portal after the season was over. Uh, the roster right now, with exception, you've got RJ – you've got four guys, I think, you know, you've got RJ, you've got Seth Trimble, you've got Jalen Washington, you've got him on the Baycott, you know, and everybody else is new. But, you know, the, the 24 cl- 23 class doesn't look like what it looked like a month ago. The 24 class doesn't look. You've had a 24 move up to 23. Mm-hmm. You've had a 23D commit. So, you know, everything everything's still fluid and still changing. But like I said, I don't think there are going to be too many changes here. I think just about everything that's going to be done has been. Yeah, definitely. Never a dull moment in, in college sports nowadays. We'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And this is this is not <laughs> going to change. This is not going to change. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was telling somebody a while ago that they said, man, here it is June. I said, well, we might as well get used to this. This used to be a time that um, if you're recruiting, basketball recruiting, you know, you kind of enjoyed a couple of weeks of vacation. And that, that that's couldn't be farther from the truth now. <laughs> Well, portal, well, then I L of all that stuff. And, and you know, I had seen last uh, last week. They said Nick Saban said one of the things that they did uh, with the coaches, some things that they kind of monitored, was how many seven day work weeks that the yeah. coaching staff at the University of Alabama worked. And I think he said it was he was either forty four or forty eight wow. seven day work weeks. Uh, it was one of those two numbers. 
where, you know, you never get a day off. So, you know, it's, and, and trust me, we love recruiting. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. And we enjoy every second of it. But I, I'm just here to say you, you, you never know. You better take your phone with you. You better, <laughs> you better set your alarm clock, wake up 30 minutes and look at it and see what yeah. happens. It's changing all the time. Yeah, man. You can't put your do not disturb on when you're in this business. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll yeah. tell you that. I'll tell you that for free, man. It's, Crazy, 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 but definitely fun and interesting nonetheless. And we'll go ahead and wrap it up on that note. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been David Sisk. Appreciate y'all tuning in as well. Make sure you keep it locked to tarillustrated.com. Links in the description below. Come follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Links to our, our social medias are also below in the description. And I'll link David's article down there as well. If y'all want to go read that, go check that out and learn a little bit more about the situation and how it played out again. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been David Sis. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.